Hello, this is Pat Cahill from Pat Cahill Metalworks, and today I thought we'd make a belt buckle. So, what we're going to need to do this is some pretty sturdy wire. This is 10 gauge sterling silver wire. A tube, sterling silver tube, and it should fit loosely with the, you don't want it a, a tight fit, you want a nice loose fit. So that works nicely. And I've got this uh, Montana agate, which is a very nice stone. It's like old old mine stock too. It's had it for a while, so this is a nice stone. And a piece of sterling silver 18 gauge flat sheet. And I'm going to paste this on, glue stick this on, because you'll see what I'm going to do next. The belt buckle is approximately an inch and a half in this direction and two and a half inches in this direction. And what I've done is I've outlined where I'm going to put the stone and I'm going to have a little bit of detail on the sides. using my hole punch. So that's what I'm going to get set up to do now. I also already made the bezel. I'm using this, gal this uh, gallery wire. I thought that'd be a nice look for the belt. I've made so many bezels that um, you know, I'll be making so many more uh, that I, I felt that I could get away with just doing that off camera. So the next step is now that I have this pasted on there, is to, all right, I'm playing with somebody here. I am going to close my, my glue stick. <laughs> I know in one of my videos I, uh, I was using glue stick and I just left it, left it open <laughs> for a long time. And I got a comment about it. And so, there you go, it's closed up. Let me back this up a little bit so you get to see more. Okay, so I'm just going to take, and where I've done these little dots, I'm going to use my center hole punch and do that. I'll probably cut here. There's no need for you to see me do my center hole punches, but it's pretty easy. It's a nice little tool to have for many things, including decoration. Okay, so that's done, and I'm, I don't need this thing anymore. I'll be able to tell what's center. All right, so there it is. I can get rid of some of that glue water base so it comes off real easy. So let me just get rid of that. Get the, towel. the next step I want to do is to round off these edges. I don't want them sharp. So I'll take a move over here a bit. Take my file. And then some All right. And you can see it's a good start. Now, smooth them out a little bit more. Make sure they're consistent too. Next step is to solder on our Or piece that will hold the uh, Montana agate. And we have, what with the detail, we have a nice way of aligning it right in the center. <clears throat> so 
so that looks good. Next is to flux it. Put our um, our solder down and melt the solder. So let me get ready to do that, and I'll bring you back when I'm got that all ready to go. Okay, we have all the solder down, and we're ready to um, melt the solder to the bezel to the, um, the blade, back blade. So I forgot to turn on the torch, but that's no problem. And get this all set up in a second. Okay. Nice bushy flame. As always, start on the big piece. No need to go for your bezel right away. And that looks good. I'll put this in the pickle. And we're going to go from there. That's a big chunk of silver. That's why it took so long to uh, melt my solder. That and the fact that I didn't want to didn't want to wreck my bezel. Okay, I'll be back. Okay, so the bezel's on there nice. And the next thing I want to do is I want to curve the edges of this. So, you know, when it goes around the waist, it also has a little curve in it. So that's that side. And we'll do the other side. I'm just using uh, these pliers with uh, the rubber inserts so I don't nick anything. And there we have it. Give that a little bit of interest. Plus, it'll work better as a belt. So our next step is going to be, and I'll fiddle around this a little bit more. Make sure I have it exactly. Yeah, that's working. As you can see. Nice flat seam on both sides. Looks good. And I want to do this after I do the bezel. Um, if you do it before, you might, the bezel is not going to sit exactly flat and it's going to be harder to solder. <clears throat> so it's best to do it after. Now, the next step is I want to put on a tube on the bottom of this. And so this is going to be for about a one inch belt can be smaller, it won't be able to be larger than that. So I'm going to make a, a tubing that is about oh seven eighths, something like some something like that, inches long. And we'll do that with our miter jig right here. Now this isn't um, this tubing is not thick walled so you have to be careful don't squeeze it all the way down you will you will indeed squish it so there's my one side it's nice and flush perpendicular to the tube and then I'll measure out the amount I want to make. So, what I'm doing? 
one, two, three, four, five, six, seven eighths of an inch is what I want. So I'll just mark that. With a sharpie. Uh, you're not seeing that. So again, it's just using my else square and I'm measuring seven eighths of an inch and putting a little sharpie mark there. And that goes back into miter jig. Saw that off. It's just flush with the end. It doesn't have to be exactly seven eighths. You want it less than the loop you're going to put around it, which you're seeing in a minute, what we're talking about there. And again, finish it off, sanding. Get a nice smooth section of tube. Now, this section of tube is going to be soldered onto here. Doesn't matter, one side or the other. And what you want to do, oops, try that again. So, this section of tube is going to be soldered onto the back plate in the middle. And as you can see, it rolls around. So, you want to make a flat surface so you get good contact between the tube and the back plate or the belt. So, I'm going to take that over to my sanding. Well, let me show you a little bit here. Grab a piece of sandpaper. And carefully sand, and don't move, just carefully sand one part of it so you get a nice flat surface. So, I'm going to do that. That takes kit. You, you should be very careful. You don't want to, you want it just flat on one portion of it. So, take your time and do that. And I'll be right back. Okay, so that's all sanded, and we have a nice flat surface. Don't know if the camera will pick that up, but hopefully you can see that it's flattened right here. And it's ready to be soldered. What I'm going to do is sweat solder this. So, what? Bring this over to a... Oh, see, since I don't want this, like whittling around on me. Well, put a little flux on it. I think I will use a third arm, as they say. Second arm. Whatever. Flux it nice, and then I will need some actually easy solder. I don't have that prepared, so give me a minute and I'll get right back to you. Okay, so I have it, my chips fluxed and soft solder chips on it, and I just want to melt those. So I'm using a little smaller flame here. I don't need that big guy. I'm going to have to go back to it though because of the big piece of silver we're going to have to sweat out of this onto. Alright. Perfect. I'll pickle that. Sand it down a little bit and get ready for the next step of soldering it onto our Our back plate. I'll be right back. Okay, here's the setup we have. We have the tube centered, and we have this is going to be the little hook that goes into the eyes of the belt. And I did the same thing with it on the side. I, I 
load some easy solder onto it. Both have been fluxed, and so now it's time to uh, get the solder to flow. Again, we got a huge piece of silver in these rather small pieces that we're soldering onto the the big buckle itself. I want to make sure that this is exactly perpendicular. And we're ready to go. As always, don't concentrate on the, the actual things you're trying to solder right away. I'm not too worried about this, um, the hook part. And you notice that it's hugely, <laughs> hugely longer than we're going to need. But it's easy to cut it off and adjust it after you have it soldered. And it's easier to solder it right now as if it's over the amount is longer than you need. Okay, I think that's flowed. This one's a little more. That movement told me it, it, it flowed. Yep. We got it. Okay. So let's put that in the pickle. And I'll bring you back. Okay. So we have those two solder. Now we need to take care of this. So we want to bring it down. We also want to put a little curve into it, so it curves back like that, and then put like a little point on it. So we'll do that with our files. And the other thing we're going to need to do to finish this off is we're going to need to put in this piece that for the uh, for the belt that will be bent. I, I have a little marking where I want to bend it, and. Then we'll have to bring these two down and solder them together. So that shouldn't be too hard, but before we play with that, let's get this so we don't have that in our way when we're trying to make this right. So now that I just wasted a bunch of this, I'm going to cut off more than half of it. going to file it Bring it over here when you're filing it make sure you're not filing your belt buckle itself all right that looks good for now and I want to take a little bit of a, get a little curve in there. Just like that. You see that? And and then finish up the uh, finish up the filing. Add a little bit more of a curve. I think that's necessary, which I don't know, but I'm gonna give it just a more. Yeah, that looks better. Okay. And sand that baby. And I just did what I told you not to do. You know, file or sand the back of your thing, but we'll be able to deal with that. It's not too bad. side too so good and I'm going to bring this sorry I'm going to 
to bring this over to the red wheel and just, just spit that up a little bit. Get rid of those just very, very fine lines. And uh, I'll be right back. Okay, so we're ready to form this piece. Put it in. Bring it all the way out to the end. Pair of pliers. Bend it. Now don't worry that they're not a little cattywampus. That's okay. We'll deal with that. Okay. So now we want to bring those two together and solder them. But first I just want to make sure I have it as good as possible. So I'm going to fiddle a little bit here. Or maybe I should just fiddle off camera. I'm basically just trying to make it just as, as, as you know, square-like or rectangular-like as possible. I mean, it just takes a little bit of time, and it's really hard to do it right in front of the camera because you can't even see where my hands are, and I need to, like, play with it. So I'll be right back just to get it right. Okay, so that's just, just, just played a little bit just to make sure that this is nice and straight. And now the next part is to... Um, Bend these over. I'm getting away from the camera because I've used my body to um, for leverage, typically. So we don't want this too wide, but we don't want it too small either. So. All right, and I, as usual, and as I suggest, use more than I, I need to. I'm going to do that to the other side now, and then I'm going to work, cut them both, and get a solder joint ready for it. So, okay, that looks good. Okay, so you got a good um, distance, I think. Because you're going to have two layers of leather going around this, and then another one that comes through to uh, attach the hole. So now I'm just going to saw this part out carefully, and it's kind of tough to do on camera because I can't get a good grip on it unless you see what I'm doing, which probably you're not either. So I'm going to go off camera. I'm just sawing here so that I have two pieces that are nice and flat and we can solder them together. So I'll be right back. Okay, so we have those two pieces sawed out. We have a nice connection between the two. And now I'm just going to solder it. We'll flux it. Put a little chip of solder on it so I can find some tweezers. Now hopefully I've set this up so that there's not a big heat sink with the, with the belt buckle itself. So I can just concentrate on just this, kind of almost like doing a jump rings. And that seems to be the case here. It looks good. Okay, a little clean up, and we'll be almost ready to finish this guy up. Okay, so here's where we stand. That was soldered from the last part. I just um, filed away any solder blob so that it looks nice. And the next step would be to uh, 
set the stone and then I'm going to oxidize it which I'll do off camera and then I'm going to um, use steel wool to give it a sort of an antique finish so pop that stone in there nice and tight with the gallery wire it's actually quite easy to set the stone and so let's pull around Push in and then over. The same thing on the other side. Are you seeing this? I hope so. Again, push in and over and over. Try to get it all uniform. Do this um, before I oxidize with this stone, mainly because it's it's opaque. It has some translucency, and it would be nice to show that off, but you really can't with a belt buckle. So that's pretty well set in there. I'm going to go over it again just to make sure I have it all nice and uniform, but. That's it. And the next step is to oxidize it. And then as I said, I'm going to take off quite a bit of the oxidation. That will bring out those uh, center hole punches or details. And will also give it more of an, an antique look. So let me do that. I'll get back to you for the last like uh, step and we'll be done. Okay, so here it is oxidized. Come back front and as I said I'm going to give it a little brushing with the uh, steel wool oh I forgot <laughs> where when, you, when you're using gallery wire and steel wool you're, you're gonna have a little bit of grabbing of it you can see there but, okay so just take your time and and swirly motions. And I want it to be um, start to remove quite a bit of the oxidation. I did forget about the. Uh, the issue with gallery wire and steel wool. We're we'll gonna have to pick at it and get those things out of there. You can see how they're grabbing. But so I don't want this to be perfect. I want it to be rustic. An old belt buckle, which is what I'm trying to do here. And so that's where I'm going to keep working on it. Let me um, cut one more time. I'll bring you back for the final result. Okay, so there it is. Finished belt buckle. I learned a lot doing this. This is my first time making a, a, a belt buckle. So um, I don't have a belt to um, show you how it would look. I mean, I can just put it fake it, put it on here so you can see. But you can see how that would be pretty nice. See, it needs to loop around. That's why this has to be a little bit wider than you might think, because a belt would come loop around like this, and then you put the other piece, well, this piece, on, on top of that. That would come through and grab. So there you have it. Hope you enjoyed this. I enjoyed making it. And I hope to see you again sometime. Thank you. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.